Hello everyone, it's Richard here. In this video, I specifically want to talk about problems with heated beds. Now, this is stemmed from a recent YouTube video from Chuck Hallenbuck, uh, Electronic Projects, on his YouTube channel, where he was reviewing a One How Duplicator Plus. And during that review, he had a problem with the heated bed that actually sparked and produced smoke. Now, that's a little bit alarming. Chuck decided to investigate further, and he's highlighted a problem that not many people will be aware of unless you're very familiar with electronics and uh, electrical connections. So it's something I just also wanted to touch on because Chuck's made a really good point about this and it is a very very serious issue and it could be an issue for more 3D printers out there because we're using similar heated platforms, heated beds to use on DIY and um, kit build 3D printers maybe some assembled printers as well so it all depends what heated bed and heated platform you've got so let's talk a little bit about the problem that Chuck had and um, again all credit to Chuck on this one I'm really just trying to reinforce this point and making people aware that there could be a problem with their printer as Chuck has also stated so Chuck was looking at the one how duplicator which had an aluminium heated bed platform now these are slightly more unusual than the normal heated platform, which is a, they usually tend to look like these red PCBs that you, you just mount and you put glass on top. Now, recently in the last few years, we've seen some of these aluminium platforms. Now these platforms, or this, this um, technique for putting electronic circuitry onto an aluminium plate was first sort of used for high power LEDs that were producing a lot of light and dissipating a lot of heat. So people worked out a way of actually bonding the electrical connections and that's just a film of copper which is uh, on the top of the aluminium plate, isolating it obviously because you don't want the copper to short out to the aluminium and actually using that as a heat sink for these LEDs. Now it's quite a nice technology for us in 3D printing because Again, it's a solid flat platform made of aluminium, so it'll heat up quite quickly and dissipate the heat across the bed so we can use it as a heated build platform to do our 3D printing on. Now, the reason why I've got one of these is because I bought one of these a few years ago and decided never to use it because um, I didn't really like the way it was made and it was a little bit out of spec and tolerance and the holes in the corners were just a bit too small. It has been made from a sort of reference design, if you like, that is an evolution of the Prusa um, heated platform which was done many many years ago so this is now a dual voltage heated bed 12 and 24 volts and this one's been basically just the artwork's just been put on top of this to produce this version now the problem that Chuck found out was that actually on the one how duplicator there were some metal springs that were holding the platform down and allowing some adjustment and those springs ate or cut through the very thin film that's on top of these PCBs and all this film is it's a, it's a, it's a solder resist and it's a bit like nail varnish it's that type of consistency it's a little bit thicker than paint but you can easily scrape it off and I've scraped off the corner on this just to see and show that actually this is the problem. If you've got any metal components that are holding the bed down, it can actually short out the tracks and short to the aluminium platform. That in turn, if you've got a metal spacer that often people use to put on the platforms, that can actually short through and eventually create a connection all the way through to the ground. So you're providing 12 or 24 volt connection to this platform. It's shorting out to the metal and then possibly shorting through or, or finding a, a travel path all the way through to your ground connection. And that was what was causing Chuck the problem, that he had some arcing and some smoke coming out because there was a, a very high current going through and causing a real problem. Now, just as a bit of a sideline on that, most normal PCBs are made of a material, a fiberglass material called FR4. And FR4 is a high temperature material, can go up to around 120, 130, 140 degrees C without any problem. There is an FR5 that can go even higher than that, but it's not normally used. Some other materials, this is just really background for your information, older materials actually were a paper laminate. So this is FR2 
and this is actually compressed paper and resin with a copper surface on top. FR4 looks like this and it tends to be shiny fiberglass back with a copper surface on there and this is where you would put your tracking of the heated bed and it would be etched and then covered in the silk screen and covered in the solder resist which can be virtually any colour you like. So the other thing the, the bed's normally made of FR4 and it's normally double sided so you tend to have copper on both sides. I've used this one as a, an actual printing platform at one point in the, in the past. So you end up with heated platforms which have got tracking on both sides and that's, that's really just so you're familiar with the manufacturing te technology that goes into building these. There's a lot of different designs and a lot of good designs and a lot of bad designs so even this reference heated bed platform is not good because the tracking goes right the way to the corners and if you short out put any metal components through there and they short out you're going to have a real problem there's a similar design but this one's been done a little bit better and there is actually some space around the corners to allow you to put screws mounting holes that sort of thing in there and a really good design and uh, I'm showing this one not because uh, uh, of any other reason but it is on a, one of my 3DR printers but you can see that actually the mounting points on here are quite a long way from any of the electrical connections. So you've got a big distance, plenty of room that you're not going to cause any problems. And that's sort of, that's designed by someone who knows what they're doing. And these other ones are designed by people who don't know what the end application will be or don't care or haven't thought about it. So you've got to be really careful with these types of technologies. Again, I've been building up a Prusa i3 with my daughter and the new heated bed there from Joseph Prusa is a really phenomenal heated bed and it's been designed again by someone who knows what they're doing. So this is not aluminium but it's very thick, it's 3.2 millimeter compressed FR4 and it's a laminate but it's also got the studs already fitted on the back and they're completely isolated. They don't have any electrical connection or any other type of connection to the platform so they're completely isolated and they're going to stop any problems with shorts or issues. It's a very solid platform and again it's by someone who knows exactly what they're doing and why they're designing it this way and it to be safe. So I really just wanted to make to stress that point across because a lot of 3D printers out there are going to have platforms like this with a metal plate that they sit on and they're going to have small spacers, usually metal, to hold them in place. Sometimes springs, sometimes not. Now I always try to use uh, sp plastic spacers on all of my if I have to use metal I have to use I use plastic spacers to insulate them and you've got a little PTFE washer which I bought a pack of these years ago and uh, you don't use that many so having a little pack there or we've got these other ones which are nylon washers now the PTFE obviously high temperature it's going to be great for heated bed the nylon will be fine as well so just think about it Chuck in his video used a fiber washer and again that's absolutely perfect to just isolate and insulate those metal components from the heated bed when you're mounting electronics so the actual uh, circuit board that's going to run your 3d printer whether that's ramps Rambo um, the Dua Wi-Fi or anything like that try if you can to mount them with plastic spacers or plastic I use these plastic um, M3 screws normally and nuts or mount it into something like acrylic or a platform that's not going to be electrically conductive because again you can have problems with even if a wire or a connector comes off and touches onto one of your corners and bridges a, uh, a connection you can have real big issues with that so just be aware of these types of things in 3D printing we're dealing with very high currents uh, especially on the heated bed it can be really serious uh, if you have a problem with this because there tends to not be on some 3D printers any thermal fusing or anything you're just taking the full current from the power supply all the way through and if that can find a ground connection there's going to be tens and tens of amps lots of power running through that will fuse wires cause all sorts of problems it could could cause uh, you know major problems with the electronics they could explode they could they could catch fire so really just be a bit careful this isn't supposed to be to alarm you it's just to inform you as Chuck is doing in his video so 
do take a look at your 3D printer. Think about how it's mounted, the, the, the heated bed and the electronics, and see whether you think there's any problems there. If you think there is, then use a mounting uh, system that, that is less likely to cause you a problem, and that's usually a washer to insulate a screw head or, or a um, washer, a metal washer from the, the actual printed uh, PCB platform. The only other thing I wanted to say is there are often platforms out there off eBay and various things made by God knows who, where, we don't know. And this, this PCB is actually quite, it's supposed to be manufactured in a certain way to give you a certain resistance across the board so that that draws a certain amount of current and produces enough power so you can get to 120 degrees C for ABS. And I often get a lot of people talking to me and saying, well, my heated bed doesn't heat up enough. I've got 12 volts or I've got 24 volts on it and it doesn't work. Now, that's probably because it hasn't been manufactured correctly. The, um, these are designed to have a certain copper weight and each PCB material has a certain weight of copper on. So it's one ounce or two ounce or four ounce copper. And that's the thickness of copper that you that, that's put onto the bed onto the plate before it gets etched away and that has an electrical resistance. Cheaper PCBs use one ounce copper and they etch them inconsistently so you tend to get hot spots and areas and different resistances across the bed. The best way to do it is to double check your electrical connections and see what uh, uh, what resistance rating you're getting across those. Do it at room temperature, don't do it when the bed's really hot, but do it at room temperature and you should be seeing around two point, well around two ohms, so 1.9 to 2.4 ohms on a 12 volt system and on a 24 volt system you should see around four and a half ohms across the two connections that you're going to power off your power supply. If you see wildly different, much higher or much lower, you could be drawing way too much current and this thing could be cooking and drawing a lot of power from your power supply or if you see or if you don't have enough lower lower resistance if, you do, if it's too high resistance you're going to have problems that you're not drawing enough current and actually you'll never get to your temperatures that you might need to for ABS printing so this is really just a bit of a heads up um, thanks thank you Chuck for highlighting this on the problem that you had and getting to the root cause of the problem and finding out why you were seeing that on that specific printer but it is an issue with certain heated bed designs so you need to be aware of it and uh, go and check your 3D printer right now and just make sure you're happy with that. Thanks ever so much for watching, be back again next time.